Hello, Namaskar and welcome. <coughs> now from this lecture we are going to start a series of lectures on network analysis that is also popularly known as PERT and CPM. <coughs> I thank you all those students who requested for the lectures on PERT and CPM or network analysis during the last few months. I thank you very much all of you and now this is the beginning of very long series of lectures on network analysis that is PERT and CPM and as usual we are going to start with the basics and in basics the first lecture is on the introduction of few terms and rules etc and the first very first is activity what is activity in a network diagram or part chart you would have seen some arrows and circular nodes first we are going to introduce these two things and the first is activity the arrows which you can see in this small network diagram are activities what is activity any individual any individual operation any individual operation which utilizes resources any individual operation which utilizes resources and has a beginning and end is called activity yes the most important three things are which utilizes resources activity can be say tangible or intangible resources can be tangible or intangible service is an intangible resource Yes, skill of someone is intangible resource. Materials, etc., direct or indirect, are tangible resources. The activity is which use, utilizes resources and has a beginning and end. Activity starts at some point of time and it ends at some point of time. That is activity. An arrow or arc is commonly used to represent an activity with its head indicating the direction of process in the project. Yes, the arrows A, B, C, D. Actually, in network diagram, we use alphabets. Each and every alphabet has its description of activity. What is exactly the activity which we indicate by A or B or C etc. Yes, the arrow has head which shows or which indicates the direction of progress in project. Yes, A starts, A ends, B starts, B ends. That shows progress in project. A is going on and at particular point of time A ends. And B is going on, B is actually started, B is going on and B ends. Yes, that shows progress in the project and with ending various activities, ultimately the project progresses. There are few types of activities or we can classify activity into four categories. The first is predecessor activity. What is predecessor activity? Activities that must be completed immediately prior to the start of another activity are called predecessor activity. Yes, to start an activity, first some one or more other activity should end. In this diagram, C. If we want to start C, first A should be completed. That means a is the predecessor of C. Yes. Number two is successor activity. This is actually, these two are predecessor and successor are mutual relationship. Activities that cannot be started until one or more other activities are completed but immediately succeed them are called successor activities. Yes. What is the condition of starting C? A should be completed. Okay, now that means after completing A, immediately C can be started. 
so C becomes the successor of A. C takes charge from A, something like that. A gives charge to C. Yes, if in an office one executive is transferred to elsewhere and another officer takes charge on its place, on his place, her place, then this is the relationship of predecessor successor. Yes. Number three is concurrent activity. Concurrent means to go simultaneously. Yes, that kind of relationship. Activities which can be accomplished concurrently are known as concurrent activities. That means the activities which can be completed simultaneously. The functions, various works, jobs or functions on two or more activities are going simultaneously. Yes, then they are called concurrent activities. See in this diagram A and B are actually running simultaneously. A works or jobs on A are also done at the same time some other persons are also doing the jobs on activity B. That means both are going concurrently or simultaneously. Then A and B are called concurrent activities. And the last category is dummy. There is not any actual activity. Dummy, the name itself indicates. An activity which does not consume any kind of resources. Actually, that itself is not an activity. This is just the term we use. Activity is the term just we use to <coughs> indicate it. An activity which does not consume any kind of resource but merely depicts the technological dependence is called a dummy activity. Yes, see. What happens? To start B, it is the condition that C as well as B should be completed. The relationship is D becomes successor of C as well as B. C and B are predecessors of D. But now, we can also use this kind of additional arrow to indicate that B is also completed before starting D. Yes, then this kind of say arrangement in a power chart by us is called dummy activity. Yes, it is advisable to use as less number of dummy activities as possible in any network diagram or power chart. Yes, this is just actually an example, I have created this dummy activity in this chart to show you the example of a dummy activity. Now, on the basis of this discussion, let's do a small exercise. In this network diagram, number one, A and B are concurrent activities. Because A and B are running simultaneously. A is dash of C. What is the relationship of A with C? To start C, first A should be completed. That means A is predecessor of C. Okay, mutual relationship. What is C of A? C is dash of A. A ends and C starts. That means C is successor of A. B and C are dash of D. Before starting D, B as well as C both should end. That means B and C are predecessor of D. Okay, again mutual relationship. D is dash of C and B. Yes. Af only after end of C and B, B can be started. So D becomes successor of B and C. The arrow from B, sorry, 
नोट नंबर थ्री टू फोर इज दिस इज एन एरो सो वी कैन से दैट दिस इज एन एक्टिविटी बट दिस एक्टिविटी डजेंट यूज एनी रिसोर्सिस दिस इज जस्ट अरेंजमेंट बाय अस इन द पॉट चार्ट instead of directly showing the error of b going to here we have used the extension of b so this is called dummy yes many a times we can actually say draw a bar chart without using dummy so it is advisable to avoid use of frequent frequent use of dummies yes okay i think i hope the concept of activity is becoming clear in your mind if required watch this lecture again and be clear about the concept of activity in the next lecture we are going to discuss the concept of these circular nodes and that they are called events that's it thank you very much